All right, so we have a unique problem, and that is that our clutch is way too aggressive for what it should be. And the reason that is, is because our slave cylinder and the clutch master from the Mini Cooper, which I have in the car, everything with hydraulics comes down to the ratio of the bores and how much travel you're looking for. So how much travel with a given bore will give you a certain amount of fluid push, you want to make sure that you have enough fluid to compress, or in this case, engage fully the slave cylinder. If we take the boot off here, the way you see this, there's a piston in here. Normally the clutch is actually going to push this piston with a rod, and then there's an internal spring that does push it back. But what ends up happening is your clutch itself has springs in the pressure plate. That's what all those little fingers are. So that's going to push this back. So normally it's going to sit fully engaged. When you step on the pedal, it pushes outward, and that disengages the clutch disc, allows it to spin freely, and that's how you change gears. The problem I have is the ratio of the bores, the diameter of this inner hole, along with the diameter of the master cylinder hole, that ratio gives you what's called a mechanical advantage. And that mechanical advantage really sets apart how easy or how hard it is to push the pedal. So it's not uh, an issue of, you know, get strong or whatever. Uh, it's an issue of a factory clutch replacement. The pressure plate feels like that of a stage three clutch. That's normally not an issue for me driving. The problem is when I put in a stage two or stage three clutch, now it's gonna be ridiculous race spec. And the way that it is now, I'm actually bending the OEM Mini Cooper clutch pedal. So the master cylinder bore, in this case, is 19 millimeters. That's about three quarters of an inch. Normally, the master cylinder has 5 eighths of an inch, so I want to make this match the factory GSX spec. And the factory GSX is uh, 5 eighths to 3 quarters. So if we look at that ratio, that pretty much comes out the equivalent of a Mini Cooper with the 3 quarter inch master cylinder and a 7 eighths inch, uh, 7 eighths inch slave cylinder. Now, it's not exact, I did a little bit of rounding to try and get to the easiest nominal value because it's very hard to order or manufacture a piston on such a weird off spec. So what I ended up doing is I have here, this is from the front wheel drive model. The front wheel drive has a 0.82 inch bore. And the reason that this is important is because the 0.82 inch bore is a little bit bigger. It's a little bit closer to what I want. What I want is a 0.875. So what that means for me is a little bit less machine work, like instead of a 6 8 which is 3 quarters, 6 eighths, right? Uh, it's like 6 and a half eighths, so it's in between a uh, 3 quarter and a 7 eighths, right? Um, so right now I can push the pedal just enough to engage the uh, starter, the starter switch, but I have to bend the clutch pedal at the last little bit to get it to start. So we're going to just compress it to get it out of the way. There we go. Alright, so I got it out. Oop. So take that out, and now you see the piston comes out. There's our piston, there's our O-ring, right? And there's our spring in there. And in there you can see that's basically it. It's just a smooth bore with a C-clip on there. And so now we need to go ahead and check what our tolerances are and see how much uh, space we have to work with. We don't want our wall to be so thin that uh, it's going to fail. Um, or that it's going to deform. Those are our two major issues. But at the same time, you know, we want to make sure that we can fit our uh, our piston in there. So we're looking right around four millimeters. So we're right here. And if you look, we're exactly at 0.81. And now we'll take our smallest telescoping gauge. Here we go. Three quarter to uh, one and a quarter. There we go. We have that measurement, that's locked in place. Now we can use our micrometer to figure out this measurement here. All right, so we're looking at 0 0.84305, right around 33 thousandths of an inch in terms of uh, piston to wall clearance. Now we actually have to get this fitted on the lathe. The way that my lathe clamps, it's not going to clamp very easily onto this. Um, we will want to take off our fittings here so that they're not spinning because that, especially this one here, the uh, banjo bolt is really going to cause it to spin off center. 
because it's not a very big lathe and we don't want too much wobble. This should not be this hard. So now we need to figure out how to get this on the lathe. Let's see how this spins. So we might have to shave this outer bit down so that it becomes centric here, flip it around, machine the other side so that it's perfectly centered, uh, and then flip it again, line it back up, and then clear the bore. Got a lot of material to take off, so uh, let me get my safety gear on and, and we'll get to it. Alright, now we didn't get it machined down to where all the paint is gone, but I do think we've machined it down enough to uh, flip it over and fix the other side. Let's take a gander. We don't want to have a wavering bore or a crooked bore in any sense, so let's just see how it spins on its own. works. Don't judge me. Alright, so I had a little bit of an accident. Ended up being just too big, which kind of meant that our piston and our seals and stuff wouldn't fit, so we need to get custom seals and all that stuff. So instead of doing all that, I've decided to start over. Which sucks, that one looks really nice. This one actually looks like shit. But I found out what I needed to do. In order to get a perfect finish that would end up sealing, I need to use a reamer. Uh, the reamer is going to allow for the bore to pretty much be perfect and it's going to get right up to that final size. The problem is, this reamer is actually bigger than my entire lathe. So I can't even put it on the end attachment. It's too big to fit on the end attachment. So I actually need to clamp it in here and feed it through and then allow it to come through the piece this way. I have jerry-rigged a vise on top of my lathe to clamp my workpiece and I'm actually using this to drill perfectly straight. Now this is a three quarter inch uh, drill bit and I use that to align the three inch, the three quarter inch bore perfectly and the stop is right there. We're using this big ass clamp to try and fix everything in place. Um, I'm noticing that it is pretty rigid, but I don't know if this is going to slip. So I've got this thing cranked down basically as tight as I can. Uh, nothing's lifting. And uh, we're going to see just how well we can make this ghetto setup work. So we're going to go up to 13 sixteenths. We're going to start feeding this by hand just to make sure it's okay. Oh, that looks great. 
So now, um, since it's looking really nice, I'm gonna go ahead and put the auto feed on. Is basically a two and five eighths inch flute. It's actually just a hair below in terms of the cutting edge. So what we'll do is we'll stop feeding pretty much as soon as we uh, we get to that the end of that cutting surface. All right, I'm gonna try and show you what is down this bore. Pretty nice finish. Not 100% perfect, but probably the best I'm ever going to get and the best I've ever done, that's for sure. So, that is our custom slave cylinder. Now it's time to make a custom piston.